thoughts. I hope the minute that's taken hasn't come off my time, please. Um, my lords, I'm going to start. I don't wish you to get too encouraged by that. I'm going to start with my conclusions, but I'm not going to sit down when I've made them because I'm going then to give you the evidence to support them and hopefully present to you the reasons why I want support for a, an official inquiry into the mischief I want to unfold to yourselves this afternoon. My lords, I've been engaged in this pursuit of this issue for nearly two years now, and I'm no further through to getting to the truth. I think there are three possible conclusions which may come from it. I think there may have been a massive piece of money laundering committed by a major government which ought to know better, and that it has effectively undermined the integrity of a British bank, the Royal Bank of Scotland, in doing so. The second alternative is that a major American uh, department has an agency which has gone rogue on it because it has been wound up and has created a structure out of which they are seeking to get, well, at least 50 billion euros as a payoff. And the third possibility is that this is an extraordinary elaborate fraud which has not been carried out but which has been prepared in order to provide a threat to one government or more if they don't pay them off. So there are three possibilities, and this all needs a very urgent review. My Lords, it starts in April and May of 2009 with the alleged transfer to the United Kingdom, to the HSBC, of a sum of $50 trillion. And seven days later, ping, in comes another $50 trillion to the HSBC, and then three weeks later, another $50 trillion, a total of $5 trillion in each case, sorry. A total of $15 trillion is alleged to have been passed into the hands of HSBC for onward transit to the Royal Bank of Scotland, and we need to look to where this came from and what the history of this money is, and I have been trying to sort out the sequence by which this money has been created and where it's come from for a long time. It starts off apparently as the property of a man called Johannes Ryardi, who has some claims to be considered the richest man in the world. Well, he would be if all the money was owed to him was paid, but I have seen accounts of his showing he owns $36 trillion in um, a bank, and it is a ridiculous sum of money. Uh, on the other hand, the $36 trillion would be consistent with the dynasty from which he comes and the fact that they had been effectively the uh, emperors of uh, Indochina in times gone by. But a lot of that money has been taken away from him with his consent by the American Treasury over the years for the specific purpose of helping to support the dollar. And he has sent to me a really quite remarkable document which is dated in February 2006, in which the American government have called him to a meeting with the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, which is neither Federal Reserve nor a bank. It's a bit like Celebrity Big Brother. It's got three names to describe it, and none of them are true. And the, this document, which is quite astonishing, purports to have been a meeting which is Witnessed by, it is witnessed by Mr. Alan Greenspan, who signed for the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, of which he was chairman, as well as the real Federal Reserve Bank in Washington. And it is signed by Mr. Timothy Geithner, who, who, as a witness on behalf of the International Monetary Fund, who sent two witnesses, the other one being Mr. Yasuki Horiguchi. And these gentlemen have signed as witnesses to the effect that this deal is a proper deal, there are a lot of other signatures on here. This is not a photocopy. This is a, an original version of the contract, under which the American Treasury have apparently got the Federal Reserve Bank of New York to offer to buy out the bonds which have been issued to Mr. Riardi to replace the cash which has been taken from him over the previous 10 years. And they're giving him half of uh, 500 million dollars as a cash payment to buy out worthless bonds. Now, this is all in the agreement, and it's very remarkable. Um, I would have thought establishing whether this is a correct piece of paper or not is just two phone calls away, one to Mr. Geithner and one to Mr. Greenspan, 
both of whom still prosper and live, so they could easily confirm whether they've signed this. Mr. Royardi has, by passing these bonds over, also put at the disposal of the US Treasury the entire asset backing which he was alleged to have for the 15 trillion. I now have a letter here from the Bank of Indonesia which says that the whole thing was a pack of lies. That he did not have the 750,000 tons of gold which was supposed to be backing it, he only had 700 tons. And this is really uh, a piece of complete fabrication. Finally, I have a letter here from Mr. Bayardi himself, who tells me that he was put up to do this and it was none of it was true, and that he has been robbed of all his money. And I'm quite prepared to recognize that one of the possibilities here is that Mr. Riardi is himself putting this together as a forgery in order to go and try and win some recovery back. But it gets more complicated than that, because each of the five trillion payments that came in has been acknowledged and receipted by the senior executives of HSBC and again receipted by the executives of the Royal Bank of Scotland. And I have a set of the whole of those receipts for all of this money. Why would any bank want to sign five trillion pounds worth, five trillion dollars worth, 15 trillion in total of receipts if the money didn't exist? The money was said to have come, first of all, from the Riyadi account to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. And from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, it was passed to J.P. Morgan Chase in New York for onward transit to London. The means of sending it was a swift note, which ought to have been registered with the Bank of England if it was genuine. So when this happened and came about, I first of all took it to my noble friend, Lord Strathclyde, and said, what do we do with this? He said, give it to Lord Sassoon, he's the Treasury. So we did, and Lord Sassoon looked at it and said immediately, this is rubbish. It's far too much money. It would stick out like a sore thumb, and you can't see it in the Royal Bank of Scotland accounts. Quite right. Secondly, he said, the gold backing it is ridiculous. There's only been 1,507 tons of gold mined in the history of the world, so you can't have 750,000 tons. Uh, this is true. And uh, the, the third thing, he said, obviously, was it's a, it's, a, it's a scam. And I agree with him. It was a scam. The problem is we stopped looking at that point. We should have asked, what is the scam, instead of, uh, at that time, just nodding it off. And we have never really resolved this, because today I have this quite frightening piece of paper, which is my justification for bringing it into this meeting today, which is available on the internet, and I'm astonished that it hasn't already been unearthed by the Treasury, and every alarm bell in the land should be ringing if it has, because this is the... General Audit Office of the Federal Reserve, the real Federal Reserve in Washington, and its audit review in Ju end of July 2010 on the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. It has on it some 20 banks listed, to which $16.115 trillion are outstanding in loans. My Lords, that is the sore thumb that was being looked for by Lord Sassoon. But more particularly, there are two other very interesting things with this. The first is that Barclays Bank have got 868 billion of loan. The Royal Bank of Scotland has got 541 billion, in which case one has to ask, as they could have earned in three weeks enough to pay off their entire indebtedness to the taxpayers in Britain, why they have not done so, and could we please ask them to put a check in the post tonight for the whole 46, mil 46 billion? Uh, and the third thing that's wrong with it is that every bank on this list, without exception, is an MTN registered bank, which means that they are registered to use medium-term notes to move funds between themselves with an agreed profit share formula, in which case these banks are investing this money and, most extraordinary, not a penny of interest does the Federal Bank of New York want paid on this vast amount of $16 trillion. Any monk, one amongst yourselves who knows what the IMF rules are will immediately smell a rat because the IMF has very strict rules for validating dodgy money. There are two ways of doing it. You either pass it through a major central bank, like the Bank of England, who had apparently ref not refused to touch this, or alternatively, you put it through to a bank which is an MTN trading bank, 
and which is then able to use the funds on the overnight European MTN trading market, where they can earn between 1 and 2.5% 2 profit per night. And the compound interest on that is huge. So there is a vast profit being made with this money somewhere if it is in fact genuine. So, my Lords, I believe that this is such an important issue now that uh, I put everything I've got on the subject into a 104 megabyte memory thumb. And I want the government to put this to some suitable investigative bureau and take everything I've got on the subject and find out what the truth is of what is going on here, because there is something very seriously wrong. Either we have a huge amount of tax uncollected on profits made, or we have a vast amount of money festering away in the European banking system, which is not real money, in which case we need to take it back. My Lords, I ask for an investigation and please support my, my plea.